Hello and welcome to Google Cloud Next. In this session, we'll be talking about leveraging open source about, as part of your data cloud strategy. By the way of introduction, my name is Irina Farouk, and I'm one of the product leads for our smart analytics portfolio. And joining me today is Anil Madan, Corporate Vice President of Data Platforms at Walmart, who will be sharing their journey for transforming their data platform in one of the cl largest cloud platforms in the world. But before we delve into the Walmart story, I'd love to share a little bit about the importance of open source and our approach at Google of helping you leverage it as part of your platform. As many of us realize, we're living in the golden age of open source, where it has now been pervasively used by enterprises across the globe. In fact, 99% of Fortune 500 companies are using open source today and the pace of adoption is only accelerating. As we look at this transformation, the key is that open source is no longer in a separate corner of your data platform. Instead, it needs to be fully integrated as part of the mainstream platform, giving your team the flexibility to use the best tools for the job with centralized security, governance, management, and an integrated platform. At Google Cloud, we have long focused on enabling customers to modernize their open source deployment with Cloud Data Proc, our managed open source offering. Customers like Metro, Broadcom, Vodafone, LiveRamp can use Data Proc to modernize their large scale Hadoop and Spark deployments, changing the way they power their platform, productivity of their teams, and ultimately, innovating in a way they interact with their customers. As we've been on this journey over the past five years of helping some of the largest customers in the world to transform their open source data platforms, we've learned a lot about what it takes to manage some of these deployments. And last year, we made our special commitment to Spark on Google Cloud, making Spark a first-class citizen on GCP with bringing innovations like serverless Spark for all of your workloads, from exploration to data science to data engineering, bringing it as part of the integrated pervasive experience on GCP, and then ultimately giving you the flexibility of consumption in the way that makes sense for your platform. This year and this week at Next, we're innovating further with our Spark offering by now integrating Spark in BigQuery. What that means is that now your uh, analyst, data scientist can leverage Spark stored procedures natively from within BigQuery, all with the same integrated billing, integrated security and governance, and ultimately that seamless serverless experience that they're used to with BigQuery translating end-to-end -end from BigQuery to Spark and beyond. The other innovation we're introducing is a serverless Spark interactive uh, integration with Vertex AI. So now your data scientists can seamlessly do iterative development on serverless Spark, all with the same built-in security, authentication, ease of use, and seamless onboarding to our MLOps platform. And now I would love to welcome Anil to the virtual stage to share the journey his team has been on to help power the data platform at Walmart. Welcome, Anil. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm really, really excited to share more on how Walmart is leveraging open source as part of our cloud data strategy. As Irina mentioned, my name is Anil Madan, and I have the privilege of leading the data platforms team at Walmart Global Tech. My team is responsible for one of the largest hybrid multi-cloud data platforms, including all of the data services from operational databases, analytics, machine learning platforms, A-B testing, and AIBI tools. Great, thank you, Anil. So why is data important to Walmart? How does it play a role in the Walmart business overall? 
Data is that raw material that drives every aspect of our retail business. Data helps us build delightful experiences for both our customers and our, and our associates which, and or our employees. And it basically controls every part of our data lifecycle from online transaction flow to offline big data analytics. The heart of all of this is our mission and vision to save people money so that they can live better making shopping easy as if you're talking or texting a friend, ordering what you need, when you need, so that can be delivered within an hour. So data in that sense is powering our entire supply chain optimization. It's powering AI ML, which in turn can help us predict demand, forecast better, and create real-time inventory intelligence so that we can optimize for both cost and efficiency. Meanwhile, computer vision and language models which are again derived from data are helping us create powerful experiences for our customers. And finally, data is enabling augmented and virtual reality to help customers try and buy products. It's incredible and so inspirational that impact you're trying to drive, you're driving actually on our everyday lives. So how do you think about building the cloud platforms to support this, these ambitious goals? Yeah, so you know, our approach is we've basically taken a whole hybrid cloud approach where we've assembled public, private, and edge clouds together in really a regional model, which is giving us scale, flexibility, and elasticity so we can innovate uh, for, for our customers. We call that internally the triplet model, which is basically an innovative and powerful way for us to bring in these things together to enable what we call as our edge cloud, which is 10,000 odd stores across the US and globally, so that we can bring in the computational power and data closer to our customers and our associates. Now this way, the, the triplet model, what it does with this approach is, it offers not only burst capacity for us to react better, but also help us with managing the peak consumer demand, such as holiday shopping season, or a great price on in-demand gaming console. It's also helping us with resiliency, DR, while it's helping us reduce cost. I mean, we're looking at about a 10 to 18% cost reduction to support everyday low prices. That's incredible. So as you build that cloud visions, what are some of the key tenets of your data platform strategy? Yeah, so look, the data platform actually sits on top of that in cloud infrastructure, which I just talked about. And it really includes all the tools, frameworks, and uh, databases and analytical systems. It includes thousands of databases dealing with millions of what I would say IOPS, messaging pipes, which move terabytes per second, streaming systems, which is, again, processing billions of events, and then big data and AI ML platforms, which are powering all our BI and, and, and predictions. This in aggregate is helping both uh, serve not only the online experiences, but also the store transactions. And daily we are ingesting petabytes of data, which, are, which hundreds of our scientists and ML engineers can actually build upon to power these experiences. Now, at the heart of it, our data strategy is actually centered around three big tenants, right? The first one is data placement and geo-affinity, which is all about how do you categorize data so that you can create geo-affinity and you can direct customers to, the, to their local triplet, right? Where they have these triplets in, in East, West, and Central, if you really look at US. And by doing that, what we do, we can enable is some very powerful experiences while still enabling, uh, enabling while still supporting cost optimizations. For example, a user visiting a .com site in New York would be routed to our East triplet, right? Additionally, we've also built automation so that we can symmetrically deploy these workloads across uh, these clouds. The second component or the second tenant to our, our strategy is intelligence sync, which is all about how in a multi-cloud environment you can acquire, process, and intelligently distribute data across heterogeneous data stores which span both 
private and public cloud, right? So, so that's a critical piece of, of, of our strategy. And finally, the AIML, right, with the advances in, in CPU, GPU, TPUs, it, it's helping us really create some amazing predictive models, which then can be deployed real time through our element.ai platform. So we have a we have a, a, a open source based AI ML platform called Element, which actually can symmetrically deploy across all of these clouds to, to uh, power inference uh, so that these models can be used in real time context. So I heard you say open source and I couldn't resist asking, what role does open source play in your overall strategy? Yeah, so open source is a critical enabler in how we are deploying data services across public, private, and the edge clouds. And our approach is actually using the best of breed data products across open source, as well as a public, a public cloud provider. Open source capabilities like Cassandra, Postgres are powering our databases. Solar Elastic Searches are powering all our search and our operational analytics. Memcache Redis is powering all our caching. And then things like Kafka and Spark Streaming are powering our messaging and, and, and streaming capabilities. Now this is giving us, this is coupled with things like Spanner, Alloy, Cloud SQL, and capabilities from other cloud providers to create what we call as best in class. These in conjunction help us, uh, help our engineers innovate by using fit for purpose product for their application use cases. Thank you, Anil. So, you know, our teams have partnered so closely on Dataproc. Can you please share a little more about the role it has played in modernizing your Hadoop deployments? Yeah, absolutely. Look. I mean, we've gone through a massive 18 month journey where we have actually moved all of our on-prem workloads from on-prem Hadoop to, to the cloud, right? To GCP and uh, Dataproc has been a, as, as one of the highest used services for us, right? In, in that space, it's helped us in three areas. Now it's serving as the backbone for all the pipelines, right? In, at, at, in how data moves between operational stores and to the analytical stores. It's helping us close the feedback loop through real time processing and streaming, which can feed back from operational stores back to serving systems. And then the third component is positively powering all our machine learning, right? So which the, all of element.ai actually sits on data proc to really create fit for, for, for purpose workloads across CPU, GPU, and TPUs creating that innovation for our scientists and our machine learning engineers. That's great, Anil. And what would you say have been the biggest benefits as you've gone through this very rapid transformation? Yeah, so to, the key benefits is like, it's first of all helped us create an enterprise lake because now with this modernization, all data is in one place with Google Cloud Storage. The second piece is cost, right? Because now we can run ephemeral workloads as opposed to running static workloads, paying for both electricity and power in our on-prem data centers. The third component is scale. So now we can, things like auto scale help us, give us the elasticity we need for processing. So those are three key benefits. That is great to hear, Anil. So what are you most excited about as the next phase of your evolution in your data strategy? Yeah, so I would break that, you know, I'm excited about a couple of big broad areas, right? The, the first, the big data component, right? The big data piece, there are, there are I think three key products which, are, which could be very, very exciting for us, right? I would say data catalog and governance, right? So the work I think you guys are doing with Dataplex, right? That uh, could give us that metadata layer so we can power all of our, our data catalog, right? So we can discover and create data quality rules, understand lineage, and ultimately provide trustworthy data to our business so that we can shorten the time for decision-making. The second component is Big Lake, right? Where you start interoperating workloads between BigQuery and Dataproc so that you can leverage the power of a single storage engine to do both. And then the third component is how can Vertex AI complement our element platform so that we can bring in the best of breed across these two. 
The second piece of what I'm excited about is in the database space, right? With things like Spanner and AlloyDB, because those could also be game changing for us. Thank you, Anil. And that is very powerful. How do you think about, it? I'm sure lots of people in the audience are sitting and looking and they're in the earlier phase of their own transformations. What advice would you give them as they start on their journey to help transform their business? Yeah, so I would say, look, I mean, multi and hybrid clouds are a reality, accept it. Cost is a critical component, don't ignore it, right? I mean, you have to look at price performance across open source and cloud provided. And the third piece is best of breed gives you choices. Use that effectively, open source and cloud provided. Leverage it so that your engineers and scientists can actually innovate with best products in the industry. I hope this advice is useful. And again, thanks, Irina, for really having me uh, here at Google Next. Thank you so much, Anil. And uh, leaving us with this innovation message and really helping folks understand the journey you've gone through at Fortune One scale. Hope you all enjoyed the talk and you enjoyed the rest of Google Cloud Next. Thank you very much, and we'll see you soon.